Alright guys, so today we have some maintenance stuff to do on the vet. We gotta do some standard stuff like an oil change, so I won't really bore you with that much. But we're gonna try to fix the side skirt, doing some drift stitching. Uh, we have this Woodwood Hydro Master Cylinder to replace the eBay one. We're gonna see if it's any better. We're gonna hope it's not leaking anymore. This fitting, it's like this fitting's too short and this one's too long, which is annoying, but we're gonna try to make it work. We're gonna replace the hard line with the braided line, so we'll have two braided lines. All of that is in store today. But real quick, as promised, garage update, toolbox review. I'm not a reviewer, but I'll, I'll just go over it real quick. So first, let's start with the garage itself because I'm, I'm real proud of this. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time and I reorganized my whole side of the garage. I'll try to input like a picture here of what it used to look like, but here's what it looks like now. So that's my old box and that's my old box. Both of those I inherited from my grandfather you know, they kind of got passed down to my dad a little bit. He immediately passed them on to me and they've been my toolboxes since I was 16. And out of everything I have from my dad, my grandparents, all of that, these boxes have the most sentimental value to me. So instead of letting it go to waste, Fed is using it, but it, I, I'm not giving it to him fully just because of the sentimental value. Otherwise I would if it was just any old toolbox. But he's using that one, which will help him get his side of the garage completely cleaned up. He hasn't put all his tools in it yet, but he's been working on his side of the garage. He's got his workbench pretty much cleared off. These seats are probably gonna go soon. Um, he's, he's done a really good job cleaning up his side of the garage, which I'm proud of him. Thank you, Fed. If you're watching this, you're probably not. So I'm still using this one, because this is all like consumables. You've got bolt drawers, you've got like electrical stuff, you've got like a junk drawer, of, like stuff that's not junk. Um, and then this is all the same thing, consumables. We've got some parts like fuel pump, SAFC, all that. and then wiring, soldering, tape, uh, tech screws, all, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really happy to have this cleared out of tools so I can use all consumables in there. I got my OSW Team Tandem Suck the Least poster up. our valve cover and S13 strut brace all hung up, which makes me happy. Pegboard's looking a little barren because we now have most of the tools in the box, but you know, I'm not gonna rush to fill this up because every time I try to do that, I end up having a ton of stuff that I need to put on it. So that's a little quick tip. If you get a new toolbox or something, don't be so concerned with making it full. Leave yourself room, which is what I did with this box. I still have a few empty drawers. That way I have room to grow into it. That's very important. So as far as the box itself goes, I mean, it, it's a really nice box. I'll just show you my two favorite drawers, well three actually. Got my wrench drawer, we got my star lineup, my second base, ratchety wrenches, short wrenches, standard, uh, and they're all like super organized. It's awesome being able to just go in and be like, oh, I need a 13, here we go. And I try to keep them, I just messed it all up because I was looking at the camera. You get the idea. Got my socket drawer, got half inch, three eighths quarter inch. Uh, it's organized that way just so it fits nice and pretty. Uh, quarter inch ratchets, three eighths ratchets, half inch ratchet, because I barely use a half inch ratchet. I mean, normally using an impact. Um, accessories divided for each, like extensions, swivels. Uh, really happy with this. This has been a game changer. And then this drawer is really cool. So it's got slots for the impacts to go in and then slots for the batteries to go in. You can just take this out if you don't have any impacts, but I think it's really cool. And I think it's cool that uh, it comes with the rubber mats for all the drawers, so you don't have to go get these separately. And like the big ones have like the Milwaukee in them, which I think is pretty neat. It's got some other cool little things, like it uh, comes with a bottle opener. It's got a power strip here on the inside with two USB ports, power strip on the outside with two USB ports. Uh, it's got a tool holder out here, a uh, paper towel holder, which I think is really cool. This area is nice. It's got a pegboard too, which obviously we haven't started on because we haven't filled that one up, but this will be cool to organize some stuff. I can 3D print some brackets and stuff for certain things, so I really like that. All in all, uh, it, it, it's a nice box. I really like the, uh, this is like a wrinkle red finish. It's like a flat 
matte red, which I think is pretty cool. Ah, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it with the toolbox. <laughs> Something funny worth noting, as soon as I got this, I posted about it on Instagram and a bunch of my friends are hitting me up like, oh dude, congrats on the box. And I feel like it was also like a, a rite of passage to be considered a tool nerd. And now like, for example, me and Tyson, you know, every time we hung out, you know, we'd always talk cars. And now me and Tyson, strictly tools. Like, that's all we talk about is tools and organizing socket trays. <laughs> it's really funny. It's one of those things when you get older and you use tools for so long, you realize how much value there is in tools. And then you kind of go a little overboard and you want cool tools just to have cool tools. It's kind of like home improvement, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. I never understood that until I got older. As far as a review goes, I'm like I said, I'm not a reviewer. I think the best thing to do if you're interested in a toolbox, go to Home Depot or wherever, whichever toolbox you want is, and check it out. Like I know Home Depot has this one set up and they have a couple of other brands and you can compare. Like I, I did it myself the other day when I went to buy an air compressor and just compared the fit and finish and you know the, the feel and the size and the features, like whatever everything come, comes with side by side to another one and I think that's going to give you the best representation of what you should buy way more so than my review. I will say I like it and in general as far as getting a big toolbox goes I think it's well worth it now. I used to again be totally against it and think it was silly to spend money on a toolbox but after getting this one getting it set up and we're like pulling the motor out of the Miata and having all my tools right where I needed them all laid out not digging through boxes of wrenches and stuff it really does make a big difference. Um, and I want to extend a huge thank you to Milwaukee for sending this over to me. I think it's really cool that they're willing to support me by sending me some stuff. I do want to make the distinction that they're not paying me to say anything. They don't have any list of things for me to say. There's no like it needs to be in a video or it needs to be at this point in a video, any of that. It's literally just they send it to me, I do with it what I may, and I buy plenty of Milwaukee tools myself. So I just want to make sure you guys know that when I come off as commercial like about a tool, I'm just very enthusiastic about tools and especially certain tools like electric ratchets or like these Knifex pliers. Like I'm not saying you should go spend $25 to $30 per pair of pliers, but if you're between that and buying like a whole kit for 30 bucks of a bunch of crappy pliers, just buy nice ones to start with. I really wish I would have just bought nice ones a long time ago because now I just have a bunch of useless pliers. <laughs> so that's that. If you guys like the Tool Talk stuff, let me know um, and I'll talk more about it. It's just difficult because no matter what product it is, people think I'm like getting paid to promote it if I talk about it in a positive light. So, <sighs> okay. We're gonna get to work now. Sorry if I bored some of you who don't care about toolboxes, but I did get a lot of questions about this. So wanted to at least cover it. Uh, Willwood Master versus eBay Master. We're gonna see what happens. I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Everyone tells you if you get an e eBay Hydro, swap the Master with a Willwood one because the eBay ones suck. My eBay one works fine. It leaks because it's got the wrong fitting. We now have the right fitting, which I'm still concerned about, but we're gonna try it out. We're gonna cross our fingers that it doesn't leak because this would be the third time I had a leaking Master. So let's go get the seat out, spill brake fluid everywhere, and uh, have, have a good time. <laughs> Yay. Gotta take my ground for the old amp off. So we're gonna be swapping this hard line to another braided line like this because we now have the fittings we need to use the second braided line. It'll be easier to deal with. Um, and this, it just, I, I, I don't have faith in it. Uh, so hopefully the braided stuff will work better. I do need to check clearance stuff though. Uh, let's see. That's not, that's not too bad. It's not that much taller. I think we'll be okay. I have a plan though. I have a plan to, to fix this. So I know if you guys are looking for like clutch, uh, like handbrake master fittings, I had no idea where to look. If you search, I don't remember if it was Summit or Jegs, but you literally search like the size and like brake line, you come up with all these fittings. So if you know what size you need, it's easy to order them on there. It's really hard to find what you need at like the auto parts stores. Ah, there it goes. Okay. 
Okay, so here's what I did. I took this fitting, which is what I had connecting the braided line to the hard line in the back, well, the T, rather, uh, since it's shorter than the one that I ordered. So this should help me with that height underneath the seat. Uh, so now what we need to do is swap this master on, swap the lines, you get the idea. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get this line out and get the other one in place. Well, both of these lines need to come off. This one just from here. Line with a braided line is, I had to go really tight on it to get it to seal properly and I don't want to strip the other one out. Oh, we already got brake fluid oozing. Got brake fluid coming from everywhere. Always a joyous occasion. I, I, I think brake fluid is the number one thing I hate the feel of getting it on my hands. It's just got such a weird feeling to it and it's really hard to get rid of. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this guy out. I'm really hoping this hole is large enough for me to stick this other braided line through. We'll find out in a second. Yeah, the chances of that are looking very slim. Okay, so we're gonna have to pull this line, this line out, drill the hole bigger. Run them both back there. All right, stepper bits are the way to go if you're going through something like that. That thing just knocked right through there. Wow, that was impressive. Okay, e-brake and braided lines are in. I'm gonna go ahead and connect them back at the actual brakes. And uh, I guess before we put the seat in, I'll try to bleed it a little bit and just kind of see where we're at. That way, if it's leaking, I don't have to take the seat back out and back in and back out. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, well, Fed pressed the brakes really hard while I was under there. We've got no leaks coming from up here at all. No leaks underneath. Everything's good under there. So, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the seat and everything and we'll move on to the rest of the project today. Fed's finally home. He's been gone for a week and I've been lonely. Yeah. Working on stuff all by myself. Not that Fed ever helps me anyway. Oh, uh, never. Never. Not even now. Not even now. You're just sitting there. You didn't press the brake or anything. No, nope. not at all. Nope, not a bit. That was the other Fed. The other Fed. All right, I was able to spin the fitting around to where it comes out forward and it just clears. So we are good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this handle off and throw a quick bit of uh, black paint on it. Just because I just hadn't painted it yet because we've been testing it. I do wanna stain the handle eventually too because that's 3D printed, but 3D printed out of wood. My coworker did it for me, put my initials in it. I think it looks really cool, so. Okay. Hi, my name is Taylor Ray, and I work on cars. <laughs> I also drift the cars that I work on. Do you? And get crashed into by other cars that I've worked on. And crash into other cars. We do lots of crashing here. Uh, so I've got to wait for that handle to, handle to dry. It's wrinkled black, so it should be pretty durable. Um, but it's going to take a while to dry, so we're going to finish this whole process up in the morning. Yeah, we've got to get a handle on things. Uh, yeah, i got to get a handle on things, get some sleep, and then get a handle. Oh, and it's raining. Perfect time for it to dry. Okay, I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, it looks like we're getting some of your uh, northeastern weather here. Overcast, let's see what the temp is. 54, that's that's real cold for here, <laughs> for us. Okay, so, the E-ray candle, I don't, you can't really see it. Uh, maybe you can see it. It's got the, uh, the wrinkle black, it looks good. Came out nice, very excited about this. Uh, so we're going to reinstall the handle, fix the side skirt while we wait for Fed to get here so that we can bleed the bricks. So the rod on the Wilwood one got stripped out, so I took them apart, and you can see this is not the rod from the Wilwood one, but this is the hardware from the Wilwood one. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It's got like a beveled edge to it and everything, so it sits nice and flush and tight, and there was lube uh, like inside the master, whereas the cheap 
China one just uses a flat washer and a random snap ring. The dust boots just like random universal fit where the other one's like crimped on. Much, much nicer setup as far as the design goes on the Woolwood. Interesting tidbit. Plus that looks like a hardened rod as opposed to this. It, the rod just looks like a better material, the Woolwood one, but it's stripped. So we gotta put this one in from the eBay master. Play here. Which this rod has a little bit more play than the Willwood one did. So with just that minimal amount of taking apartness, um, the, the Willwood one is definitely a lot nicer, surprisingly enough. I figured they'd be pretty much the same, but it's like the small details that make a difference because the eBay one had a ton of play. So I'm hoping I didn't screw all that with the eBay rod, but you know. Jam this washer in here. I'm trying to find one that doesn't have these wings on it. This is just to test fit to figure out the thickness I need, but it eliminates my left and right play. There was a ton of it before, but these super cheap snap rings, I broke both of them trying to take them off. Just trying to pry them open just enough to take them off, snap them in half. So I gotta go buy snap rings. <sighs> Fun stuff, guys. Fun stuff. All right, I had to go to Harbor Freight to buy a snap ring assorted pack. Got the broken snap rings for here and here back in. Uh, so now I can put the handle on and we can actually bleed the brakes and make sure this is all good. Quick tip, if you have a jagged hole, like where let's say you cut out an area for intercooler piping and it's just like sharp metal, or in my example, the hole that the lines are running through, what you do is you take a piece of rubber hose, cut it, and then cut it down the middle. And then what you'll do is wrap this in the hole and it'll pinch it and keep the lines from chafing. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up as best we can. Here we're gonna drill holes through here and through here and drift stitch them back together as you call it. So we're gonna do like two more. Hashtag fixed. Ta da! I need to come up with a better way to mount these side skirts though, because they're constantly falling off, like all the time. They rub on something and they start to tear these self tappers out. Probably use uh, rib nuts or something in the future. But we have fixed for now. Looks like a real drift car. Oh man, what an endeavor that ended up being. I'm sorry if this wasn't up to the quality of like the previous videos I've been trying to do where, you know, I don't know, I'm trying to put a lot of effort into the filming and a lot of you guys have mentioned that you noticed that and I think that's really cool. Uh, it's a lot more fun for me to do it that way. But, uh, first test on it, terrible. Uh, there just was a bunch of air in the line. So we re-bled them and bled them forever. It took like a really, really long time to bleed all the air out. I think there might still be a tiny bit of air in there, but I mean, we bled it for like an hour and finally it's good. It locks a little earlier, like overall because of the design and the better parts, like just the way they're all machined together. The Willwood definitely has a lot less play than the eBay one. The eBay one was a slightly different size so that could contribute to it, but it does take a little more force to lock up the Willwood one. Um, but again, there's less play, so kind of a catch 22, but the Willwood one, if you definitely look at them side by side, is a much nicer built and more well thought out uh, master cylinder than the eBay one. One more quick side note before I let you guys go. Uh, after doing the cam and valve springs on the motor for the Miata, I definitely completely up for doing cam and valve springs at a minimum in the vet. So I'm excited about that. A couple of people have mentioned that and I just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, so that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, I'll see you next time. I think drifting or drift reviews. We're gonna be doing drift reviews tomorrow. It should be fun.